Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Today, I'm unveiling the scaleless ball python. You're watching Snake Bites. Every success story starts with a dream. In this case, it was a scaleless headed ball python that I imported from West Africa. And what a ride this adventure took me on. What was the highest amount Brian was offered for one of the scaleless ball pythons? A, $50,000, B, $125,000, or C, $250,000? Go ahead and answer down below in the comments and check back later in the show to see if you had the right answer. This week's Reptile Report Spotlight is Morelia Python Forum. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. The Scaleless Ball Python project meant so much to me. I tell you, I knew what kind of impact it could have on BHB and the entire ball python community if it proved out. If things go well today and our vision is right and we hit the odds and hit a scaleless snake, 10 years from now, we're gonna see scale with ball pythons and pet shops and collections on tables at reptile shows, and it's all gonna be down to this very moment. For years, I was totally convinced that breeding scaleless head animals together was gonna to produce a completely scaleless animal. You know, but I'm positive. I, I, I believed in this collect this this project for three or four years. I've been waiting for this very day and and I'm excited. Every person that visited my collection, I would tell them the story and tell them that I was gonna hit a completely scaleless ball python. When I first started working at BHB and Brian showed me this scaleless head project, I didn't think anything was gonna come of it. You know, I mean, it was just kind of just unbelievable. But he was so convincing and, and over time, I really did start to believe. Brian comes to me with a lot of crazy ideas and it's really hard for me to take stock in everything that he says. Well, I'm working a deal out to get a few hundred crested geckos right now because I think it'd be important for uh, the future. We need to discuss this. I hope you don't have them just showing up. They may or may not be here tomorrow. Well, they better not be here tomorrow because we're not ready for them. So when Brian came to me thinking that these scaleless heads bred together were going to produce a totally scaleless snake, I thought he was nuts. I mean, there's no way that something like that was going to produce something completely scaleless. So I really thought he was crazy. The night before we were going to cut that clutch was a completely sleepless night for me. The doubt really started to set in. I thought to myself, how did I convince myself that two animals that were just missing a handful of scales on their head would produce a solid scaleless snake? I'm gonna be honest, by the time the morning came, I was completely convinced that I was crazy and that there was no way there was gonna be a scaleless animal in one of those eggs. <sighs> what happens if we miss it? <laughs> what happens if our odds just don't go? The day that I cut the scaleless ball python clutch, we had to film an entire Snake Bites episode. So that day, it was so hard for me to concentrate when all I could think about was what was gonna happen that afternoon when I cut that clutch of eggs. You ready for this? Let's go ahead and saddle up and get out of here. So when Brian left here to go cut those scaleless eggs, to be honest, I felt really bad for him because I thought he was going to be very disappointed and I was not looking forward to that phone call. Well, the moment of truth was here. Everything that I had built up for years was about to come to fruition right now. I tell you, I was beyond nervous. After we cut the first egg, I was just freaking out. I mean, there was, I can't even describe what I was feeling. Certainly, all that doubt I had about not producing a scaleless animal was starting to come true when we missed on the first snake. Now, you have to remember, we were live tweeting the cutting and filming the Snake Bites episode, so the time between the first and second egg was probably about five minutes, but it felt like an eternity. I gotta be honest, when Brian cut that second egg and there was a scaleless animal in there, I mean, I, I almost can't describe what I felt. I know I was yelling really loud, I, I kind of don't even remember. I just kind of like blacked out a little bit. I've been breeding reptiles for 25 years and I've produced so many incredible animals, but I can honestly say that moment was the most exciting moment in the reptile business that I've ever been involved in. I can't even explain 
how amazing it was. As a matter of fact, about five minutes after we hit, I don't even remember it. When I watched the show, it was the first time that I actually remembered what happened. It all just kind of blurred out. It was so incredible. I looked at my phone and I saw it was him. I reluctantly answered it. And immediately I could tell, as soon as he spoke his first couple words, how excited he was that it was just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that he had finally hit it. I was expecting him to be just crushed and not know, you know, like, oh great, now I gotta console him. And just uh, the reaction that he had was so crazy. So I was in the incubator room that day that we hatched Scalus, and let me tell you what, I've never seen more excitement on someone's face than Brian's. It was, it was the most exciting experience for me, too. And uh, it was really exciting. I mean, that was the happiest I've ever seen Brian, I think. And, I was happy for him to see somebody that happy. Listen, this could have turned out really badly. I had told so many people about this and actually created a live tweet event. If we didn't hit the scale list, I would have probably looked pretty silly and people would have thought that I didn't know what I was talking about. Now, I'm not saying that I'm brilliant by any stretch. I really just got lucky. For some crazy reason, I believed in this and it ended up working out. And I'm just so grateful and blessed that it worked out the way I hoped it would. All right, you guys ready for the unveiling of the scaleless ball pythons? Well, here one of them is right here. Take a look at that beauty. Just an amazing animal. Now, these guys are two weeks old already, so they both shed and fed the very first time. So they're incredibly hardy animals. I know there's some concerns out there about a few things, and I want to go ahead and touch on them right now. First off, when they do shed, they shed completely fine in one piece, just like a normal snake, just minus the Scale. And yes, they do have eye caps, so they still have the skin over the eyes to protect them. Now, a lot of people were concerned about the lack of heat pits. And yeah, the scalation on their face are what causes the heat pit, but you can tell really close, they still have those heat receptors. So I'm absolutely positive they can still sense heat. And lastly, they are lacking the ventral scutes, which a lot of people think is really weird, but I'm here to tell you that they move completely normal, just like any other ball python. As a matter of fact, I took them to Tinley Park, and people were really surprised at how normal they felt as far as the way they moved and the way they acted. But of course, the actual touch is completely different. It's completely soft and smooth. Such an incredible snake. What was the highest amount that Brian was offered for one of his scaleless ball pythons? If you said B, $125,000, you were 100% correct. Good job. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Certainly the scaleless ball python was an amazing experience and I can't wait for the next several years to see what we're going to do with the project. If you want to follow any of my animal adventures, make sure to hit me up over on Facebook and Twitter at SnakeBitesTV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. I think the Scalus project basically hit the reset button on ball pythons in general. The tag everybody's giving it is game changer. And uh, the truth be told, that's exactly what it is. Everybody's going to want to see what a cinnamon, or, you know, I mean, all the base morphs, all the recessives, everything. I mean, we're going to have to see what everything looks like without scales.